Muichiro begins removing the needles stuck in him after falling out of the water pot, but he quickly feels the severe numbness in his body caused by the needle's poison. He notices the unconscious Kotetsu and the bladed fish demon about to attack him. After removing them all, more demons join the fight. He sees the demonic spawn pounce on the young smith without any strength and unable to stand, and that's when he remembers his childhood memories. Muichiro used to live with his parents many years ago. His father was a good-hearted man who worked hard. Unfortunately, his mother was quite ill, and her condition deteriorated until one stormy night. His father went out to get some herbs to help her, but died after tripping. If that wasn't enough, Muichiro's mother died the same night. He was luckily not alone because he had a twin brother named Yuichiro. However, the death of their parents left Yuichiro bitter. Miss Amane, Mr. Ubayashiki's wife, came to their house a few days later to inform them that they were descended from the elite swordsman. She wanted them to join the Demon Slayer Corps, but Yuichiro's bitterness won out, and he attacked her once. Meanwhile, the brothers grew apart and eventually stopped talking. A demon attacked them on an ordinary night. When Yuichiro was severely injured, Uichiro lost control of his emotions and the next thing he remembered was seeing the demon's body wreathed in pain on the ground. When he returned to his brother, he found him at the threshold of death, pleading with God to let Muichiro survive the ordeal. Yuichiro was convinced that the Mu in Muichiro stood for infinity and he wished for his brother to achieve great things in his life. Muichiro develops a distinct marking on his face as memories of his brother return. Although he had been struggling moments before, he now has renewed strength and easily saves Kotetsu from the approaching demons. Even in his terrible condition, Kotetsu is selfless and asks Muichiro to protect the sword instead. Meanwhile, Gyoko, now enraged, watches as Hotaru polishes his blade and ignores him, despite having numerous slashes throughout his body and having lost an eye. When he notices the severely injured Kozo nearby, he decides that killing him will finally elicit a reaction from Hotaru. He feels a blade approaching him and ducks down just in time to avoid Muichiro's slash. When he sees the Hashira, he is perplexed about how he managed to escape his water prison pot, believing that he did not focus on him because he thought he would die. Still, the demon interprets this as evidence of his deep concentration. He examines his face closely and notices the marks, realizing that they are the same as on that child with the earrings, based on information provided by Muzan. Gyoko is most perplexed by Muichiro's casual demeanor, despite being paralyzed and having managed to land a slash on his shoulder. Gyoko points a vase at Mist Hashira and unleashes his blood demon art, Octopus Vase Hell. Enormous tentacles emerge from his vase to grab him and Kozo, snapping his blade and destroying the work shed. Gyoko is curious about what Muichiro thinks of his new elastic tentacles, which cannot be slashed. After being knocked outside, Hotaru grabs his polishing stone, kneels, and continues his work, which the irritated upper rank notices. He decides to kill and absorb Hashira first, and is surprised to see the tentacles grabbing Muichiro and Kozo suddenly fall apart. Muichiro thanks the swordsmith now that he has his own completed blade, though Kozu mentions that he only made it based on the instructions of his first smith, Tetsuido. He is pleased to feel his new blade's balance is perfect for him as he wields it. He recalls speaking to Tetsuido, who expressed concern that no one could understand him, whether it was his pressures, his inability to remember things, or his desire to push himself before mentioning that he cries when he uses the blade made for him. He claims to be old enough not to be concerned about death, but he can't stop worrying about himself. While Gyoko prepares his octopus vase hell and Muichiro takes a stance, he apologizes to Tetsuido for causing concern, but is fine now. The Hashira blitzes forward, empowered by his marks, and uses uses mist breathing, fifth form, sea of clouds and haze, slicing through them all with incredible speed and aiming a slash at Gyoko's neck. The demon quickly ducks down and emerges from a new vase atop a tree, complimenting his new speed but noting that he is still too slow to match how fast he can move between vases. Muichiro unexpectedly asks if he believes it and wonders if his senses have dulled due to his age. Initially perplexed, Upper Five becomes stunned to feel a slash on his neck. The mist Hashira promises to slash him properly next time, but Yoko warns the boy not to underestimate him. He fades from view and reappears behind Muichiro, pointing his vases at a volley of high-speed water jet. Muichiro expertly weaves through the forest to avoid them, while more of Gyoko's goldfish demons appear and spray him with hundreds of poisonous needles. Muichiro recalls Yuichiro's final apology just before his death as he evades the Upper Five's relentless attacks. 
I apologize for not being more gentle with you. I just couldn't afford to be that way. Another thing that only the Chosen can do is be kind to others. But Muichiro, no matter how virtuous your life is, neither the gods nor Buddha will save you. That's why I felt compelled to shield you, Muichiro. You aren't like me. You have infinite strength for the sake of someone other than yourself. You are one of the Chosen. As the demon's octopus tentacles reach out to grab Muichiro, the Mist Hashira leaps up and easily avoids them all before slashing the vases right out of Gyoko's hands and staring at his opponent's next move, enraging the upper rank greatly. Hidden behind the trees, Kozo watches Muichiro confront Gyoko as Hataru continues to polish the ancient blade. The demon descends a tree and demands that the Hashira not underestimate him. Muichiro asserts that he is not and is simply stating a fact and that he will behead and kill him now that he is highly focused. But Gyoko asserts that he is, mocking his tone of voice and young age. The upper rank shifts position and appears from the ground behind Muichiro, who expresses his contempt for Gyoko due to his appearance and voice. The demon claims that Muichiro simply cannot comprehend his beauty and insults his understanding, but Hashira responds with his insults. Gyoko makes fun of his short arms and blade, only for Muichiro to point out that his blade has reached his neck and mockingly asks if Gyoko was referring to his arms. Upper Five laughs at what he considers a cheap insult and wonders if he is desperate to win, only for Muichiro to look at his vase and ask if it is symmetrical, mocking his work. Gyoko finally snaps, accusing Muichiro of having rotten eyeballs after his art is insulted. He uses Blood Demon Art 10,000 Gliding Slime Fish to form 10 vases in his hands, aiming them at Muichiro and sending countless ravenous fish that way. Mist Hashira steps back to avoid being hit before leaping from a tree and performing Mist Breathing, 6th Form, Lunar Dispersing Mist, cutting through through all of them in a flurry of slashes. Gyoku is stunned by the Demon Slayer's speed as all of his fish are sliced and he wonders why his paralytic poison appears to be ineffective. Nonetheless, he recalls that slashing his fish will only result in the release of a poison fine enough to be absorbed through the skin and kill him quickly. Muichiro then employs Mist Breathing Third Form Scattering Mist Splash to divert the poisonous cloud away from him. He then lunges at Gyoku and attempts to behead him only for the demon to shed his skin skin and vanish. Muichiro becomes irritated and demands that the demon stop dodging him and climbing into the trees only for Gyoko to laugh and declare that he has revealed his true form, mentioning that he is only the third person to witness it. He claims that once he becomes serious, no one will be able to survive him, prompting Muichiro to express sarcastic amazement, further irritating the upper five. Gyoko declares himself unbeatable after finally revealing his true form. Muichiro, on the other hand, has other plans. He maintains his cool when attacked and employs obstructing clouds, the seventh type of mist breathing. Gyoko is then surrounded by a dense cloud of mist, reducing his visibility significantly. The upper rank five spots Muichiro on multiple occasions in the following moments. Whenever Gyoko tries to attack him, the mist Hashira vanishes into thin air. Gyoko is naturally irritated, but it is too late for him now. Muichiro appears in front of him and tells him that he is not the only one who has been serious up to this point, Miss Tashira decapitated Gyoko before he could comprehend anything. This happens so quickly that the upper rank 5 does not appear to recognize his defeat until his head falls to the ground. He continues to blabber despite being defeated, and Muichiro has had enough. He slashed Gyoko's head into a million tiny pieces. Upper rank 5 is unquestionably dead at this point. Kanamori approaches Muichiro shortly after Gyoko's death. Miss Tashira's well-being concerns the swordsman. Despite Muichiro's Chiro's assurances that he is fine, he collapses moments later. The poison appears to have an effect, but Kanamori and Kotetsu are on hand to provide Muichiro with much needed medical assistance. Tanjiro narrowly avoids being crushed in the jaws of a wooden dragon as it hurls him high into the air and notices that five total heads surround the manifestation of hatred, measuring about 66 shaku in length. He is about to use Hinokami Kagura, clear blue sky, when a nearby dragon blasts Tanjiro 
Hiro with Urogi's sonic shriek knocking him into the trees. Nezuko notices her brother is down but cannot reach him because two dragons surround and attack her. Another dragon attacks Genya who fires his shotgun at the wooden demon with little effect and is forced to grab hold of it to keep it from biting him. Seeing how quickly the gunshot wounds heal, he breaks its jaws apart with his bare hands to injure it instead. Tanjiro pukes on the ground, realizing the Shriek has ruptured his eardrums, making him dizzy. The Demon Slayer is then attacked by Karaku's powerful winds, crushing Tanjiro's left foot as the Demon of Hatred beats on two drums. He hits on two more, and then Sakito's lightning strikes Tanjiro. Tanjiro realizes as he tries to flee the onslaught that the single demon can use any of the emotional manifestations attacks, and with even more power than before, as two dragons blast him with a sonic shriek. Genya is quickly bitten on the arm and hoisted high up while Nezuko is constricted in the dragon's coil. Tanjiro runs away from the dragons and evades their bites. Thinking he is out of range and taking a breather because he cannot use his breathing techniques because he is not healed yet, the Demon of Hatred then beats a drum and a dragon forms successive smaller necks from its mouth, stretching longer than before and grabbing Tanjiro. Tanjiro tries to fight back as he is pulled into its jaws, but he has become too weak to do so and is swallowed whole, shocking Nezuko and Genya as they continue to struggle. Tanjiro realizes his situation is hopeless and he is slowly crushed inside the dragon's jaws with the demon declaring their struggle over. Mitsuri leaps into the air, unsheathes her sword and races along the dragon's neck, slicing it to pieces and splitting its head open to save Tanjiro. As the dragon crumbles and the demon realizes his new foe is a Hashira, Mitsuri hoists Tanjiro on her back and leaps away from the falling dragon, expressing her dismay at seeing such a dreadful monster. When Tanjiro calls her, she asks if he's alright and apologizes for being late. Mitsuri safely lands on the ground and places her hands on his shoulders before rocking him back and forth and telling him he can now take a break, despite Tanjiro's burst eardrums. As the demon becomes irritated by her interference, she takes her blade and declares that she will rescue Nezuko and Genya. Mitsuri rushes forward, requesting that he leave it to her as Tanjiro warns her that the demon is of a higher rank. Three dragons attack Love Hashira, but she wraps her blade around the leading dragon's jaws and pulls it taut, allowing her to use its neck to knock down the other two before approaching the manifestation of hatred. Thanks for watching. If this series is the most liked in my anime recap production, I will make a part 4. Also, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to help me make more content.